Now then guys, how's it going? I hope you're all doing superbly well. You may remember, just a short while back, Optolong sent me a filter through for testing their new L Extreme F2, and actually as yet unreleased to the market filter that they sent through, as I mentioned, just for testing on my rig. And in a video that I made about this thing where I compared it head to head against the most appropriate competition that I have on hand, all shot through my Raster 11, uh, I came up with some conclusions about it and I felt that while it's not a bad filter, it could stand to see certain improvements. Well, Optolong saw the video and to their great credit, they rather than just try and dismissing it or anything like that, saying maybe my testing's off, which, you know, maybe it is. They made another. They took it back to the drawing board, took it back to the uh, design team, if you like, and came up with a slightly improved version. Now. I have had the chance to test this thing out, but not side by side with its predecessor. So take this with a slight grain of salt, but not too much, because I have tried to be as rigorous with my testing as I possibly can, given the really challenging weather situation that we've had in this country. So I just want to stress something, by the way, as well, before we dive into this, um, every single dual narrowband filter that I've ever tested with my Raster 11 has given halos of some kind. So my testing methodology, Let's get on with it, uh, was to pick out the brightest star that I could, in this case starting with Vega, a magnitude zero star, and then gradually go down in brightness one magnitude at a time, until we found the point at which this filter starts to perform without halos. And in doing so, hopefully give you a kind of an idea as to where the sweet spot is for this thing. That seemed to make sense at the time, so uh, here we go. This was a two minute exposure on Vega, as you can see it's a fail in terms of halos lots on display. So then I changed to the magnitude 1 Deneb. Fairly nearby and the halos are much improved, right? A huge change going there from Vega to Deneb. Massive. So then the next logical step, magnitude 2 Navi, right there as you can see hopefully. Halos again, another step improved. It's looking actually quite usable. At this point, you can see just the head as well, also of the ghost of Cassiopeia, just peeking into view right there. This is the effectively the middle star in the W of Cassiopeia. Next up was another magnitude down, magnitude 3, Sagan, the actual end of Cassiopeia. And the halos are all but gone by magnitude 3 in this case. But there is more so i decided to continue the testing extend it out a little bit more and also try to introduce different colored stars into the mix to see just you know what would happen and it turns out that by magnitude four and five we are still seeing some halos very weak but they are there based on star color so the redder the star it seems like the more likely it is to actually produce some degree of halo. So you notice these two stars right here. This is Castula and 12 Cepheus. Um, the redder of the pair is actually the dimmer of the pair. And that's the one that's gave the stronger halo. In this particular image, I hope that's coming across for you. But anyway, I continued on testing a little bit further out to a little triplet of stars. Magnitude 6 and 7, I do believe most of these fall around, and also with a magnitude 5 star just over in the bottom left corner right there that has given a halo, as you can see, but the magnitude 6s and 7s in the middle, no problem. Actually, it seems totally usable by that point, and got to bear in mind, that's still a very bright star at that rate. Um, I then went one further test in terms of these individual sub-exposure testing uh, series that I did, and chose to take an image of a commonly imaged uh, region of the sky these days, which is the Squid Nebula. This is the area where the Oxygen 3 component would be visible on a nice deep exposure. But these two stars, probably fairly well known, uh, but certainly not by name, V419 Cepheus and HIP 104642A. One is fairly coloured, the other is not, but both are around magnitude 6 and 7. No visible halos, so pretty good. The reason I thought that this one was important is because it's the faintest target that I could reasonably think of that you would shoot with a dual narrowband filter. And it's a region that's going to undergo some extreme, extreme stretching. You know, if you're going to bring out an image of the squid, you're going to have to stretch the nuts off it, effectively. So that's why it shows that, and it seems to have passed pretty down well. That was a two-minute exposure. No problems. Now, 
most people are going to be more worried about this kind of thing. How does it actually perform when you're used out underneath the skies, shooting real targets rather than just progressively fading to stars, right? Because that's only something that a madman would do. Um, and here's how it did, basically, guys. So you can see here's a fully processed image of the bubble nebula that I took with this. So this was 52 two-minute exposures. I'm going to share this data with you, by the way, in a upcoming video. Or maybe the video before this, we'll see. Um, not important anyway, but it processed out lovely. You can see even the brighter stars in this region. That's a fairly bright star right there next to the bubble. No halos, no issues. Um, the extremely observant among you may notice these small circular artifacts around here. I just want to point out those to you directly so you know about them. And I can tell you that they're from my RASA, not the filter that's present in basically every filter I've tested. Uh, there's a dual narrowband filter that is so um, there you have it I processed that from this data again 52 two minute shots here's some more EAA style results that I took so this is the northern lagoon loads of signal popping out lovely you know clean details it's uh, it seems to be a nice filter this was just 78 30 second exposures came up nice and then M16 41 30 second exposures this is a tag that's ridiculously low on the horizon for me um so almost anybody's results are going up better than this in a similar situation as long as it's a touch higher uh and yeah again great performance no halos and stuff around the stars it just looks nice to me so i am gonna say i'm gonna try and keep this as short and to the point as it possibly can be and wrap up by saying i think if they were to release this filter to the market today then uh at least from my testing, I could probably send it with my recommendation um, and just say that if it comes out around about the same sort of price point as the ALPT high speed, uh, which is the kind of joint best filter that I've tested along with this, um, then I'd say it'd be a good buy. If it came out a little bit cheaper than that, then yeah, I can highly recommend it. And that's kind of where I'm at with it, guys. So until I get further, clear skies, which unfortunately... <laughs> It's not really looking good. It's been one heck of a wet summer here in the UK. Um, but until I can get further clear skies and test it, you know, side by side with the others, um, this is the best I can possibly do for you. And I hope that you uh, like the video all the same. So that's about it from me. I just want to say, as always, thank you ever so much for watching and giving your support. You know, hand on heart. I appreciate each and every one of you out there. So um, I hope that that's a well-known fact. Um... And yeah, that's about it, guys. So that's everything from me. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, please, guys.